better. Uh, they, yeah, they have to get used to a lot of different noises, but they will hear them quite frequently. So every time you're um, taking them out for a walk, they're going to hear traffic. They're going to hear um, cars and lorries and things. They're going to hear um, the noise of birds going past. They're going to hear the noise of people talking. They're going to hear the noises of dogs barking. And these are going to be something that they're going to hear over and over and over again. So it's still a really important part of your socialization to make sure that we're getting our puppies used to all of those things but they're going to be happening kind of regularly anyway. So, so long as you're getting them out and about plenty and you're doing lots of stuff with them, they will naturally get used to all of these noises. With fireworks, um, they're not all year round. So we tend to hear them twice a year. We obviously tend to hear them at this sort of time of year and then we'll hear them at New Year's as well. They're the kind of the two main times that we're going to hear them. So there's absolutely nothing at all from fireworks. And then all of a sudden, then when we do hear them, they're very, very loud, aren't they? So when, when we do hear them, it's it's a really sudden, loud noise that, that our dogs are getting used to. So they're not hearing them regularly enough. If we if we don't do anything, if we don't do any training with our dogs and our puppies, they're not hearing them regularly enough really to get used to them, are they? Um, so that's why we need to try and make sure that we're doing this sort of regular exposure to them beforehand, which is something that I'm going to talk about later on in the in the webinar. Uh, this afternoon so it's about um oh lots of people are coming now i'm just adding everyone in as, as you come in hello everyone who's just joined us you've not missed too much sorry. oh somebody's got their um their speed cron so if you could just mute yourself for me can't see who it is but yeah if you mute yourself that would be great thank you okay so first thing that we need to do is um, understanding whether our dogs are scared or not, because some dogs aren't going to be scared of fireworks, which is wonderful. And I've got a little bit of a theory about that, which I which I will explain to you. But um, if then if they're not scared, you'll you'll know they're not scared. They won't be reacting. They'll be totally chilled out. They'll just completely ignore them. They'll get on with whatever it is that they're doing. There are other signs that we might be coming across that our dogs are scared. And some of them are quite subtle. Some of them are a little bit more obvious. So you hear um, stories, and this normally happens in the news every year, you hear these horrible, horrible stories of dogs that have got really, really scared and they've hurt themselves. So they've maybe like tried to escape from a crate and in doing so they've destroyed the crate and cut all their faces and their paws up with the crate. Or they've, try to get through a window and hurt themselves trying to get through a window or digging through a door or something because if our dogs are really scared they almost go into sort of a little bit like a panic attack and as far as they're concerned they just need to get somewhere where they feel safe and so for some dogs that might be outside of the house because inside of the house is actually where they can hear the noise so they're trying to escape from that noise they don't know that when they get out of the house they're still going to be able to hear that noise they're just they're just trying to get away from it so they're the really obvious signs and um, other really obvious signs as well are things like um, toileting so some dogs if they're really stressed out they will wee and poo everywhere they'll just kind of involuntarily um vacate their bowels as well um when you know when when they're scared they uh, will be trembling as well so again that's quite a nice obvious sign not a nice sign but an obvious sign for you that that there might be some fear-based um responses going on that kind of that shaking behavior as well so they're sort of the obvious ones now there's a lot of other signs which are a little bit more subtle so i've got a nice little diagram here which some of you might have already seen in my puppy handbook which is my illustration about dog body language because obviously dogs can't tell us that they're scared so we've got to kind of read them instead read them their body language so other signs that they might be a little bit worried are so panting is quite a common one so if they're doing lots of panting and it's not hot which often it isn't going to be at this time of year that might be a sign that they're a little bit stressed yawning as well so if they're doing lots of yawning that might be a little bit of a sign of, of stress as well. And also licking their lips as well. So if they're licking their lips quite regularly, that can be a sign of stress as well. Uh, the front paw being lifted as well. So if they're just kind of sat there, then the front paw comes up. That can be a little bit of a, of a sign of, of stress as well. And then another obvious one, a nice obvious one, is the, uh, the tail tucked under. So sometimes if, if their tails are tucked under. So these are all signs that, that, that your dog is worried or afraid. So if your dog is showing any signs like that, then it's definitely worth 
uh, making sure that we're doing a little bit of training just to help them deal with it. Um, some dogs, and I tend to find tend to have found this with my dogs, react more in a kind of a guarding sort of way. So it's almost the same way they would react to somebody knocking at the door to alert you. So it's more of like an alert bark. So somebody knocks at the door, they'll bark to alert you to the fact that there's somebody there. And so some dogs will respond to fireworks in that way. They'll hear that bang and then they'll bark to alert you. So if it's just a couple of barks and then they settle down, that wouldn't concern me too much. It's if it keeps going on or if there's any other of these indications here that I've just mentioned, any of these other signs as well. That might be signs that um, signs that they're worried. And the thing about the firework fear as well is that not only are our dogs feeling all of these emotions and feeling comfortable, obviously we're sat there with them watching them have all these emotions. So not only is it really horrific for them, but it's really upsetting for us as well to, to see our dogs in that kind of state and also not really to be able to help them because, um, you know, we can't explain to them, there's nothing to worry about. It's just fireworks. You know, they don't understand any of that. So from an owner's point of view, you know, from a dog guardian point of view, we want to be able to look after them and take care of them. So it's so upsetting to see them when they are worked up like this and we can't really do anything to help. So I mentioned before that I've got a little bit of a theory about, about fireworks. So some dogs, as I said, are not remotely bothered by them and some are. And, and there's lots of different factors there. So it can be things like um, what the parents are like. So if the parents are really confident in general and they're generally OK with other sounds, then likelihood is that their offspring then are going to be quite confident with sounds as well. So it's a it's a genetic factor that's, you know, that's going to be inherited. So that's that's one thing that's worth bearing in mind. Another thing is what the breeders have done with them as well. So if the breeders have raised the puppies in a noisy household where there's lots of different things going on and they're using household appliances and maybe they've got kids toys and the TV and the radio on, they're getting exposed to all these noises nice and early. Whereas if they're raised in a very quiet home or if the breeder keeps the puppies in kennels outside, they're not getting exposed to all of those different noises. Um, so that kind of socialization that I always bang on about at my puppy classes, it doesn't just start when we bring the puppies home, the breeder can actually influence that as well when, you know, when they've got the litter at home. And good breeders will do sound socialization with, with puppies before they actually go, over, um, go out into the world, into their, into their new homes. And then obviously then once we've got them, we can carry on with that sound socialization. So all of that, that kind of prep is building them up so that we're much less likely then to have issues with, with fireworks when they do come around. Um, I also think that the time of year can affect how well our dogs cope with this. So if you think about it, if you have a puppy that's born uh, sort of Christmas time, winter time, they're not going to hear real life fireworks until the following October, November time. So they're going to be 10 months, 9, 10, 11 months by the time they hear their first fireworks. They're not really going to hear them that much until then. So they're going to be quite a lot older before they hear them than, say, a puppy that was born in the summer. So if a puppy's born in the summer, they're going to hear their first fireworks whilst they're still maybe three or four months old. That's when their first firework night is going to happen. And that actually is a really good time for sound socialisation anyway. So just naturally, because of the time of year that they were born, and the time that they start to hear their fireworks for the first time, it happens to coincide with a good time for socialisation. So if any of you are listening that have got puppies now that are sort of three, four months old, actually, that's quite a good age for them to be having their first fireworks because we're socialising them anyway. And they're hearing their first fireworks at a time when they're quite responsive to socialisation as well. So that can be it's it's just something that I've noticed, really, as I've as I've kind of worked with different dogs and and different puppies. So it's with with anything. I always say prevention is better than cure. And with sound socialisation, with firework fear, this is really very, very, very true, because if you spend the time socialising your puppy to firework sounds and getting them used to them whilst they're still young enough to change their mind about things, it's going to be much easier than not doing anything or not doing enough, finding out that your puppy is absolutely terrified of fireworks and then having to undo all of that. 
and it can cost thousands of pounds it can cost a lot of money in behavioral training and you know paying for one-to-one sessions it can cost a lot of money in medication as well from the vets so that early prevention is is really going to be very very worthwhile with with firework fear so the reason that we're trying to do it whilst they're still young is because it's easier to change their mind about things whilst they're young if we can expose them to things now whilst they're still little um then they're going to even if they are a little bit worried at first we can then reassure them and show them that there's nothing to be worried about there's nothing to be scared about whereas if we start doing this with an older dog that's sort of six to twelve months or even older than that for the first time they're already kind of set about what their beliefs are and what they like and what they don't like and what they're scared of and what they're not scared of and it's much harder to change an older dog's mind about things it's not always impossible but it is a lot harder and it will take a lot longer as well um a, a thing to sort of bear in mind is a lot of people wonder why fireworks are so scary for our dogs when nothing bad actually happens to them so physically nothing is happening to them but when they hear the fireworks emotionally a lot is happening to them and it's that which is difficult for them so the phys- the um, mental emotions that they're feeling they knock on and then have that physical effect so that that causes the trembling and the panting and all of that and for every experience they have like that so every time they hear fireworks and they go into this kind of panic attack mode where they're really really upset and really scared every time that happens that reminds them that fireworks are terrifying so almost every experience that they have where they are freaking out like that it just reinforces it and kind of makes it a little bit worse okay um right one of the cats is looking like it's about to jump on me at any minute so the answer so we've got a couple to go through so we've got um socialization um for puppies who haven't heard fireworks before and then we've got socialization for dogs that are already scared of fireworks so we'll start off with puppies first of all just because it's so much easier than um than working with a dog that that has already got those negative associations with fireworks so what shall we do So I like to use firework recordings because we're not hearing them year round anyway. So there's a few different ways that you can access these. There's a lot more than there used to be, actually. So you can go on any sort of music sharing software, so like Spotify or Apple Music or something like that. And if you just search for firework sounds, then normally quite a few different ones come up. And I would probably try a few different tracks as well, because you don't want them just to get used to this one particular track that you've been working with loads. Um, So I would try and use a variety of different tracks that you can that you can save ready for your for your firework training. Um, You can also use uh, YouTube videos as well. And then I actually use an app called Soundproof Puppy Training. So this is something that I show people in my classes as well. So if you go onto um, the Play Store on, on your apps on your phone, if you just search for Soundproof Puppy Training, then the app will come up there and it isn't a free one. It is one you have to pay for. I think it's about four pounds. It's not an expensive one. And then once you've got it, you can keep it. So it's not one that you have to renew over and over again each each year or anything like that. But that's got a big database of different noises. So as well as having your fireworks, it's got quite a few other ones in there as well. So it's it's just a nice kind of database to have of lots of different sounds. Okay, so what you want to do then is once you've got your recording sorted, you want to connect it up to some sort of speaker system. It's much better if we can do it that way because we can get the sound nice and loud. If we just do it from our phones, we're a bit limited with the sound. And also it sounds slightly different from your phones because it's that kind of tinny noise, isn't it? So we want to have the sounds of the fireworks as realistic as possible. So hooking up to a speaker is sorry the cat's just up to something under the desk and hooking up to the speaker is the best way to do that because then we can start off really quiet and then we can start to increase the volume so when you very first introduce the sounds so when if you're starting from scratch your puppy's not heard the sounds before and you're very first introducing them you'd start off almost so quietly that they don't even notice it and then you're going to pair that sound with something nice so it can be food or toys is a good one to do it needs to be whatever your dog's favorite thing is so if they're more into food we'll go with food if they're more into toys go with toys so what you can do is you can have those firework sounds on very very quietly 
And every time there's a big bang or a whistle or a pop, you're just going to feed them a really high value treat. So something like cheese or sausage or um, liver, um, chicken, something really, really high value and, and tasty that's really nice. You almost want them to get to the point where when they hear the noise, they're looking at you for a treat because they know that this noise means that they're getting a treat afterwards. You can also do it slightly differently with something like an activity toy. So like a filled Kong or a licky mat or something, again, with something really high value in, have them busy with that and then just have the recording on quite quietly in the background. And then if you're using toys, I would have like an interactive type toy. So something like a tuggy toy or a ball. So it's something where you're playing together and the play is something nice that's happening around the same time as the fireworks sound. So that would be the first step. So once you've got at that step and they're absolutely fine with that and they're not reacting at all, you would increase the volume slightly and then you would repeat. So you would go through that whole process again with it just kind of one setting louder. So every time there's a bang, give them a treat or play with them at the same time. And then again, once they're not reacting to that sound, then you would turn it up to the next level and then you would keep repeating. So as long as they're okay with the, the sound, each couple of minutes or so, you're going to increase the volume just very slightly by one level. And then you're just going to stay at that level until they're not remotely noticing the noises anymore. And then you can start to increase it a little bit. So that's, the, that's kind of the formula for training them to understand that fireworks are okay. So I would keep your training sessions really short. So 10 minutes, probably max, I would say, especially for a very young puppy, five, 10 minutes of a little training session. But you could do that a couple of times a day. So if you've not started doing any firework socialization already, we've got a couple of weeks between now and when we're probably going to start to hear fireworks, really. So I would be doing a few sessions a day to try and make sure that by the time we get to fireworks night in a couple of weeks, we want to be able to have that firework recording on at full volume, probably in different rooms of the house so that they're getting used to the firework sounds coming from different directions. And our dog's absolutely fine with it and, and not worried at all. So if you've not started it already, it needs to be little and often really to, to get them used to it. OK, so that is um, our puppies. If they've not heard fireworks before, if we're just introducing them to fireworks for the first time. So it's slightly more tricky if you've got a dog that's already scared. And I've got friends' dogs who are already scared of fireworks or who weren't scared before and have started being scared. And I've worked with dogs that have been absolutely terrified by fireworks as well. So it's so, it's very common. You know, we we see it a lot. It's a it's a it's a really upsetting and stressful time for for dog owners and dog professionals as well who work with these dogs as well. So if your dog's already scared. Um, there's a few sort of main things to do. So the big one I would say is to protect your dog from hearing fireworks. So if they're already scared and they've made that association of when I hear fireworks, it is going to be terrifying because my body's going to react in this way. You want you don't want them to experience that anymore. So as much as possible, and I know it's a really big ask and it's really hard, we don't want them to ever hear fireworks because when we start the training with them, we'll do the same principle that we've just done with the puppies, where we reintroduce it gradually, but in a positive way. So if every now and then they're still having a really big um, anxiety attack to the sound of fireworks, that's just going to undo all of the training you're doing. So we don't want to confirm to them every time they hear fireworks. Yes, I was right. Fireworks are absolutely terrifying. I was right to react in, in the way that I do. So things that you can do, are uh, you can um, go away for a weekend. I know people who will go up to the Highlands of Scotland for a weekend when fireworks are, are on. I know it sounds extreme, but if you've seen um, a dog reacting in total panic to fireworks, then you would do anything to avoid it at all. Uh, take them somewhere where they won't hear it. So if you've got... Um, friends or family that have got a house out of the way where you could go just especially for the actual night when you know all the big displays are going to be on and people are going to have them on in their fight in the gardens that will be a good time to go visiting some friends or something if that if there's somewhere quiet you can go to um and then in the house as well if you can make it in the house so that the sounds are masked as well so we'll go through a few of those 
um, tips in a minute, but things like having the radio on and the TV on, if you have loud noises on indoors, that can sometimes mask the noises outside. Doesn't always work if they're already really anxious about fireworks, but it, but it can help. So as much as possible, stopping them from hearing any fireworks at all. The other thing that I would definitely recommend you do is speak to your vet. So vets are really used to seeing this. This happens every year. They're going to be brought dogs for the next couple of weeks. There's going to be lots and lots of appointments for them about firework fear. There's new developments in medication for firework fear all the time. So um, sort of 10, 15 years ago, it just used to be a case of sedate the dog, knock the dog out and some people obviously thought that was quite extreme or weren't sure whether that was dealing with the root of the problem, which it isn't necessarily, but it stopped the dog from having those reactions. Um, since then, we've got new things on the market. So I actually heard about a completely new medication the other day, which I've not even heard about. There was one um, introduced a couple of years ago, which is a gel, which you put onto the dog's gums, which was to help soothe them as well. And there are some herbal supplements as well. So Things like school cap and valerian can be helpful. But if your dog is already really, really scared, I doubt the herbal medications will necessarily help as much as some prescribed medication from the vets. So I would definitely speak to your vets if you haven't done so already or if you've not spoken to them about it in a while, because there might be something new that would be um, worth a try. And then. I would definitely contact a trainer or a behaviourist to start doing some training as soon as possible. If your dog's already scared, it's highly unlikely that if you start now, um, we're going to get them OK for in a couple of weeks time because we're talking weeks and months of training. But the plan would be if you start now, they will be OK for next year. So just to give you an idea of timescales, it is a long, slow process and it's impossible to say how long any dog is going to take to respond to the training. Some dogs respond much more quickly than others, uh, which is why it's worth starting as soon as. I have had some clients where we've started working together just after fireworks, and then we've had fireworks at New Year's, and then they've not been as bad with the fireworks at New Year's. So there's always that to think about as well, that we might have fireworks around that sort of time. OK, so that's what to do if your dog is already having these reactions um, and already has a really negative association with, with the firework sounds. So looking ahead to the big day or big days, it will probably be, won't it? So these are the things that I'm going to be doing. So we've got a full weekend of it normally, haven't we? So we've got the Friday night, which is the third, the Saturday night, which is the fourth, and the Sunday night, which is the fifth. So my prediction based on the last couple of years is, so Saturday night is going to be the big main display. So I think Saturday night will probably be where most of the big displays are. So there's going to be one big display then. On the Sunday night, I expect people will be doing it in their gardens. So there's going to be closer but smaller displays. And on the Friday night, I think it will probably be a mixture of both. I think it will be some organised displays and I think it will probably be some at home displays as well. So potentially we've got at least three nights where we're definitely going to need to be prepared for this. So first thing, make sure they've had plenty of exercise during the day. Obviously, some of you with young puppies are a little bit limited with this. So it might be other ways of tiring them out. But big, long walks. Um, I'm going to try and do a good few hours with with Pippi during the day, during daylight hours to tire her out so that she doesn't need to go out again then when it's dark. So once it gets dark at sort of four or five ish, I won't be taking her out of the house then at all. What you don't want is you don't want to whip them around the block at six o'clock, walk past someone's garden, they let off a massive firework and your dog is absolutely terrified. And then it starts off this whole sequence of events with your firework fit. So make sure they've been to the toilet as well before that time. And then I wouldn't let them out again to the toilet until they're all over, because even hearing them in the garden can be quite scary for them. Make sure they've been fed. Um, there are some schools of thoughts that think that a nice carby meal, so like pasta or mashed potato, can be quite soothing and settling for them as well. Um, I mentioned earlier about the background noise. I would also keep your curtains closed because seeing them can be quite stressful for some dogs as well. So have the TV on, have the radio on, lots of different background noise, but make sure that starts before the fireworks start so that that's already there in place to mask the sounds when they do hear them. Uh, make sure they've got a nice cosy corner to hide in. So I just tend to give um, 
Pippi the run of the house. So she can, if she wants to go and hide under a bed, she can. If she wants to go on a sofa, she can. If she wants to um, sit with us, she can. She can. She can go wherever she feels safest. And then the last one, which has been a bit of a uh, sort of a contentious one, has been the theory of if they are scared and we then fuss them and, and reassure them, are we rewarding the fear? So could we accidentally reward them for that fearful behaviour by being attentive and talking to them and, and kind of checking in with them and stuff like that? And it's absolute nonsense. If your dog is upset or your puppy is stressed, you can reassure them and talk to them and comfort them and cuddle them as much as you want to as much you know as much as you feel you need to that's that's what we would do with a friend who is in that situation that's what we would do with our children if we were in that situation so I want you to treat your dogs the same I want you to you know reassure them as much as as much as you want comforting and reassuring them in the middle of what's essentially a panic attack is not going to make them more likely to do it again it's going to help them so it's actually going to help them calm themselves down and soothe them so it's actually a really really good thing to do okay. i think i talked really fast then like i always do with these things so we're going to go on to questions i've got about five minutes so hopefully that's enough time uh, to go on to any questions um so what i'm going to do it's i'll let me see if i can see everyone so you don't have to put your cameras on if you don't want to. That's absolutely fine. I totally understand. Uh, but you can if you want to, if you want to uh, show your lovely faces. So if you want to ask a question, I'm just going to get you to. Um, no one's put anything in the chat so far, have they? Yes, you could put it in the chat. So you can um, put questions in the chat box and I can answer them there. Or you can unmute yourself and you can ask a question. I seem to recall there was a way of being able to put up your hand, uh, but I can't remember how to do that. So Karen's just put um, no questions. Thank you for putting it on. You're really, really welcome, Karen. I really hope it's been useful. Just as many dogs as we can help as possible. Uh, Craig and Lisa, put your hand up. Right, go on, unmute yourselves. Hi. Hello. Oh, I can't hear you. Hang on one sec. Uh, da, 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 da. Why can't I hear you? Not muted. Last time this happened, actually, my son was here and he did something, but he's at school, so he's of no use. I can't, yeah, I can't hear you at all. Do you want to, yeah, type it in, yes, if you type it in the box, thank you, sorry. Um, Catherine Wilkinson, okay, so you've downloaded the app. So yeah, sound, if you just search soundproof puppy training, uh, and then that gets, that'll get on. Um, okay, Karen's saying, my dog was fine last year, he won't be keen this year. This is, yeah, so that's a really good point is, um, even if your dog was okay last year, it's been a year since they've heard them. So it's still worth going through all of this again. It's still worth doing that prep. I think, to be honest, for the first few years of your dog's life. So I've started doing a little bit with Pippi again, even though this will be her third time hearing fireworks, because I'd rather prep her for it now, go through it now. And then if there are any issues, I can work on it rather than waiting until the, you know, until the night and then finding out that she's going to be really stressed out by it. Um, Right, so I'm just waiting for Craig and Lisa to type a question. I wonder why I can't hear anything. Anyone knows how to... Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. That's a good question. So when you wait, say wait until dogs don't react, well, what constitutes a reaction? So, yeah, I think it's fine if they notice it. So I did a little video. If you follow me on Facebook, I did a little video at the end of last week where I did a little recap with Pippi. So she was looking at the speaker because there was a loud bang, but she wasn't reacting. So if they notice it, 
that's fine. It's it's a loud noise. They're going to notice it. But you'll probably find that the more you do it, the less they start to notice it. It's more if it's like a stress reaction that you wouldn't want to build up the volume. So it's more if they start panting or licking their lips um, or um, trembling or anything like that. Any of the little stress signs, if they're doing any of those, it means that we've gone too loud too quickly and we need to go back down to the previous level before um, a build up from quieter. Uh, that's okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? I know a few of you, this is going to be your first fireworks. A few of you, this is maybe your second or third, just getting attacked by the cat under the desk as well, which is helpful. Okay, so just in case anyone hasn't got any other questions, let me go back to the screen. I've got one more slide. And then I will leave you all to your lovely afternoons. So if anyone wants any extra help, um, one of the cats has just shouted at me now. If anyone wants any extra help, um, I'm, I'm happy to help. So there's a couple of different options. If it's um, a new puppy introducing to fireworks, then I'm going to do like a little one off session where I just come round, we work through it together and then I can watch for their reactions and I can tell you whether it, you're ready to increase the volume or not. If you've got a dog that's already really worried about fireworks, then we're probably going to need multiple sessions. So again, there's a special offer on that as well. So um, for that session, for the sort of the fear session where they're already scared, um, it's normally 360 pounds, but um, anyone that's been on this call, I will do it for, I will take 60 pounds off it and I will just do it for the 300 pounds. The one-off sessions, um, if people want me to help you get started with your, with your puppy socialization, um, then we'll do, as I say, we can do those as like a half hour or a one hour session together. And I will put a program together for you, a bit of a plan together for you to work through. And then what I'm also going to do, I'm just very mindful of the time. Um, what I'm also going to do is I've got all of your email addresses. Um, so I will email you over the handout with all of the information on. And I've also got like an example sort of checklist as well, where um, I just love a tick box. I love ticking things off. Um, I've got an example check box where you can write down, you know, the noise of the firework or the track that you're using and then the volume level that you've got it on and tick that off when they're happy with that volume level. And then you'd move on to the next one. And then there's different boxes for different rooms of the house as well. So I'll send you that little example one as well, just to give you a bit of an idea. And then you can kind of work your way through that. Um, I will try and send, remember to send you the link to the app as well, to the soundproof puppy training app as well. It's yeah, it's a really good one. Uh, and you might find that there's other noises on there as well that you've not actually introduced your dogs to that you do want to introduce them to. So there's there's quite a good range there. We could do with some wind so socialisation at the moment. Pippi's definitely been a little bit unsettled uh, with all of this ridiculous wind at the moment. OK, right. I think my time's out. If anyone's got any questions, drop me an email or drop me a WhatsApp message. And please let me know if you are struggling. I'd, I'd love to help. All right. Bye.